Well, tonight we're working on uh, my brother's Jeep. This is a uh, 2004 Jeep Rubicon TJ. And um, he is out of state in the Marines, but uh, he had loaned it to a friend of his. And uh, I guess the friend called up and said that there was a problem. And it turns out it was a shock. So we got it over here. We're gonna take a look at it, see if it's something we can just weld back in there real quick or if it's something that we've got to get a new shock mount for. Before we go crawling around underneath this thing, it kind of looks like somebody's been having some fun in it. So we're gonna get, bust out the pressure washer and get it cleaned up a little bit so I don't have stuff dropping my, in my eyes. Plus I got some help. Say hi, Harlan. Hi. All right, let's get to work. Well, we got a good clean on there. Took a little bit of the fun off, but uh, all this stuff that you see on the ground down here is all stuff that is less likely to fall in my eyes tomorrow when I come back to work on it. So, it's a nice Jeep. It's a nice Jeep. It's a pretty good shape. It's got a lot of miles on it. Uh, 304,000, I think. I think that's what it's got. Let's check it out. Let's see what we got. Let's see what kind of mileage we got on here. Okay, almost 305. Yeah. Yeah, 305,000 miles. Um, runs great, drives great. Uh, it's got a lift on it. It's got uh, some okay adjustable shocks. Don't know much about them. My brother bought this about a year, uh, maybe a little less than a year ago. Don't know much about the history. It had high miles when we got it. It might be the original motor. I don't think so, but it, it's possible. It, uh, it runs and drives good. It needs a little bit of wiring issues and stuff that like that, that when we first got it, we got those straightened out. Um, might still have some of them, but that's kind of normal for an old Jeep. But we're gonna take a look at this shock and he said that the, the brakes might be hanging up a little bit. So we're gonna take a look at those two. I'll probably drive it around for a little bit because he's not coming back until September or October. Uh, and it's August right now, so I have a little bit of time with it, and then I'll give it back to the friend that borrowed it and broke it before he gets back. Unless he decides that he just wants me to park it in the shop here until he gets it, until he comes back. But either way, tomorrow I'm going to come back at this and um, finish it up. Well, now that we have it in uh, the shop, it cleaned up a little bit, we can see we have some pretty um, strange uh, separation here. Uh, it looks like some pretty decent work hardening on this metal. Uh, and we also have some separation up here. It kind of feels like it might have gotten hit at some point and bent and then uh, and then maybe worked itself loose over time though there's no real signs of an impact so I think what I'm gonna need to do is I think I'm gonna need to take this guy all apart pull the shock off and make sure that the shock is working and then we may jack it up and make sure that there's enough down and up travel in this shock to accommodate for this so it kind of feels like maybe this guy was acting like a bump stop and or a droop stop, like a kind of limiting strap. And maybe that's what causes failure because if this is the wrong size shock, that could have caused this. 
All right, I had a little bit more time to look at it, and it definitely looks like there's something misconfigured here. The shock is working. It's going up and down just like it should. Um, I can't tell if it's the wrong length or not yet. I'll have to measure that with the vehicle at ride height and droop and all that. And So for right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this bracket, and I'm going to just weld it back on there just like it is. I'll pull the shock off it so I don't melt the bushing. Put it, weld it back in there, reinforce it just a tiny bit, then I'm gonna order a new set of brackets to replace that so I can cut the whole bracket back off and then weld a new one on. And while I'm doing that, in the meantime, I'm gonna drive a little bit, get a feel for how it drives, and then I'm gonna measure out the shocks and see if maybe it's time to replace these shocks with something that might be the right size for it. I don't know what size it needs yet, so we're gonna throw this back together, just kinda of cob it in there, and then we'll deal with that temporary weld is in place. I added a small little gusset there. Um, this is an extra piece that I put on there. Weld it around the inside. I really shouldn't be showing those welds uh, because they are terrible. Oh. But that'll be it for tonight. Uh, put that shock back on it, drive it around a little bit, and order up some new mounts for at least that side. Uh, and maybe some new shocks, but uh, check it out, we'll see. I've been driving it around for a couple of days now and there's more problems here than just that shock. Um, I noticed some clunking when I was shifting. I noticed some vibrations. Um, so again, like I'd mentioned earlier, this is my brother's Jeep. So I'm here to try to fix it a little bit for him. So I went over it with a fine tooth comb and I've got a pretty good idea what the problem is. I think we're going to be doing some control arm bushings and some control arms, maybe some drive shaft stuff. Um, so I've got those parts on order. They'll be here in a couple of weeks. We don't really know. But until then, I'm going to wrap this up and I'm going to, oh, and the shock brackets are on order. I'm going to do all that at a later date. I'll probably, I might make another video on it. I might not. But for now, that's it for here. Thanks for stopping out. We'll see you on the next one.